Indicators of a Chemical Reaction Life depends on chemical reactions. Here is a diagram of all the chemical reactions that take place in your body. Some chemical reactions, like this one taking place right now, are obvious. Others are not. So what are the indicators of a chemical reaction? There are at least five. They are fizzing or bubbles, a change in odor, a change in temperature, a permanent change in color, or a precipitant being created. Fizzing or bubbles are caused when gas is released when chemicals are mixed, like when you mix Mentos and soda. Some chemical reactions cause a change in odors. Sometimes it is pleasant, like the smell of a cake baking, and sometimes they are not. A chemical reaction can cause a change in color. The change in color is permanent. Take a look at the different changes in color from the same cabbage juice when mixed with different chemicals. The color change is different based on the substance that it is mixed with. Next, a chemical reaction can cause a change in temperature. An example is fire is when the temperature increases, but sometimes it'll be a change in which the temperature becomes cold. And finally, a precipitate is created. A precipitate is a solid that settles after mixing certain liquids. So there we go, the five indicators of a chemical reaction. Brought to you by Chemical Reactions. They're a blast! Did you know that everything is made of chemicals? And chemicals can react to form new chemicals. The TV you're watching, the clothes you're wearing, and the food you eat are all chemicals. So is uh, Senor Iguana. Now, sometimes chemicals react with each other to make new chemicals. That's what happens when you see metal rust, or you hear your stomach growl, or maybe you've just seen a candle burning. They're all chemical reactions. Now, chemical reactions happen when the electrons, which are in everything, hook together. Now, here's a chemical you may have heard of. It's called uh, H2O. Do you know what that is? That's right, it's water. Now, water is two parts H and one part O. Now, look, we're running electricity through the water, and these bubbles are forming. These are two gases. One of them is H, and the other is O. One of them's hydrogen, and the other is oxygen. And look. There's twice as much hydrogen as oxygen. H2O. Isn't that cool? Now, oxygen's in the air we breathe. It's what makes iron rust and makes our blood turn red. Now, right here, we have a piece of iron, which is steel wool, and we're going to run some electrons through it and make it react with the oxygen in the air. It's pretty dramatic. Oh. Yeah, see how it glows orange? No, yeah, that's fine. <laughs> it's glowing pretty good. But over here, we have a plastic chamber that's full of oxygen and another piece of steel wool. Now watch what happens now. <laughs> pretty cool. See all the energy that's given off? And the energy's given off because the electrons are recombining with other electrons, making a chemical reaction. So in this reaction, energy is being given off. And in this reaction, we ran energy through the water, and it separated into hydrogen and oxygen. Now, what would happen if we let these two recombine? We should get water again, right? But we should also get a little energy. Well, we can do that. Because in this balloon, we have hydrogen and oxygen mixed together. And when they recombine, we'll get just a little bit of water vapor, which will end up in the room someplace. And we should get a lot of energy. You ready? Three, two, one! <laughs> now that's a chemical reaction.